Hey guys, Aaron Davis here, the Tattooed Preacher, and this is video blog number 26. Several years ago, I was standing outside of an ice cream parlor, and a little boy was sitting outside eating his ice cream, probably four or five years old. He looked up at me, and he saw my tattoos on my arms coming out from my shirt, and he asked me a question that I actually thought was kind of profound from a little boy's point of view. He said, Mister, who colored on you? And I found it quite humorous, and it actually changed my paradigm about the word colored or being colored. I'm the kind of person who sees people as people. Uh, in my opinion, there's one race, and that's the human race, with a lot of different colors of people. But the only ones that are really colored, per se, are those that are tattooed, because we have been colored on. I've intended to address this topic for quite a while, but uh, a couple of weeks ago I had a lady contact me, and she said that she had tried to go to a church, but because she had tattoos, she was kicked out of the church, and they called her a child of Satan. And this really frustrated me. Um, from a Christian perspective, it really it, it, it angered me. There's too much prejudice or even false teachings about the topic of tattooing. And so I feel like it's important that I go ahead and address this as one who is tattooed and also has studied this in depth. So what does the Bible say about tattooing and piercing? The most commonly quoted scripture that I've found is Leviticus 19.28 in the Old Testament. And it says, Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. Now, it's important to realize the context for which this is written. Um, the Egyptians had a practice of mourning and worshiping their dead um, by cutting themselves and by uh, tattooing themselves. A lot of times they would let their blood flow in hopes that the gods would get their attention and it would give them better passage or their dead passage uh, onto the afterlife. Being that the, Egypt the Egyptians had enslaved Israel for 400 years, a lot of their worship practices had been adopted by the Israelites or had been at least considered the norm as they've observed them for four centuries. One of these practices being this tattooing and, and uh, cutting of one's flesh in worship or in mourning for the dead. Uh, when God says in Leviticus 28, do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves for I am the Lord, he's telling them that this practice that you've observed is not something that I want you to do. Now most biblical commentaries that I've read uh, would support what I just stated on that, but also if you look in the Old Testament, uh, when the children of Israel were on their way to the Promised Land, they'd been delivered from Egypt, one of the first things that they did when things didn't go their way, Moses went up to, to speak with the Lord on a, on a mountain, and when he didn't come down in time, they thought that maybe Moses was dead, and the first thing that they did was went back to pagan worship practices. They built a golden calf, uh, they had an orgy and they worshipped the golden calf, which was, again, this would have been something they would have learned uh, in Egypt. So the reason God's addressing some of the things that he's addressing, specifically this particular scripture, is there were practices that the Israelites were participating in or had been taught were normal practices that God wasn't taking delight in, that they did to foreign gods, but this was not something that God would have them do as Israelites uh, in their worship practices. There are several other uh, scriptures in the Old Testament that uh, refer to tattooing and piercing, and I'm going to read a few of them and probably not going to elaborate as much on them, but I do want you to know what the Bible does say about uh, these different subjects. Isaiah 44, 5 also addresses tattooing when it says, One will say, I am the Lord's, and another will call himself by the name of Jacob, and another will write or even brand or tattoo upon his hand, I am the Lord's, and, and surname himself by the honorable name of Israel. This practice in Isaiah 44, 5 is alluding to the puncturing uh, with ink of one's hand, whereby soldiers would often mark themselves as bound to a particular commander, or the Christians used to mark themselves with the name of Christ. Now, this is according to biblical commentaries. I'm not just making this up, but if you study biblical commentaries on this uh, particular subject, you'll find that this is the case. Isaiah 40, 49, 16 says, Behold, I have indelibly imprinted or tattooed a picture of you on the palm of each of my hands, O Zion. Your walls are continually before me. Again, this is alluding to the Jews' custom, perhaps drawn from Exodus 13, uh, 9, of puncturing their hands as a representation of their city or temple in token of uh, zeal for them. Finally, and I've heard this one quoted a lot in, t in tattoo defense, I think that a lot of times it's taken out of context, but it's, it's certainly something to consider, and that's Revelation 19:16. This is talking about Jesus coming back. And on his garment or robe and on his thigh he has a name entitled, inscribed, and the word inscribed actually is inferred, written with ink or tattooed, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now certainly uh, this is not a solid justification for tattoos. 
And uh, if it's taken in its proper context, it's most likely uh, an intended metaphor and is not intended to be taken literally, as most of Revelation is. Still, it's a biblical reference to the marking or inscription of one's flesh and doesn't seem to infer that there's an absolute sin in this practice, as many claim is the case. In the regard to piercings, um, there's also a few scriptures. Ezekiel 6.12 says, And I put a ring in your nose, earrings in your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. Um, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Isaiah, Ezekiel, all make references to ear and nose piercings as a form of beauty enhancement and infer that it's an acceptable practice by uh, biblical standards. Now the question is posed, you know, do any of these scriptures directly condone tattooing or piercing from a biblical perspective? And no, I don't believe that they do. But when taken in proper context, it seems to be inferred, and it certainly in no way condemns them uh, strictly for the sake of tattooing and piercing. Society, stereotypes, discrimination, prejudice, personal opinion, uh, I think ultimately are what have created the stigma, and not necessarily the Bible. It's important to recognize that just because we don't like or agree with something, it doesn't necessarily make it sin. Now, when Christians often condemn those with tattoos and piercings, they uh, will quote the scripture, 1 Corinthians 6.19, which is, Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, therefore honor God with your body. It's important to recognize that this entire passage, uh, 1 Corinthians 6.12-20, through 20, is dealing specifically with sexual sin. And uh, to use uh, this scripture to condemn those who are tattooed, I think is to intentionally take this scripture out of context. Uh, you don't see the church condemning people who are gluttons and ostracizing them for being overweight. And modern medicine has proven that gluttony is much more harmful and dishonoring, so to speak, to your body than any tattoo might be. So am I condemning them? No. I'm overweight and have been irresponsible in the area of eating, so I'm not putting anyone down, only placing things in perspective that it's important to contextualize what is being said and to use it in its proper context when we're addressing things with people. Is it applicable? I think that it is. Um, but is it uh, justification for condemning? I don't believe that is the case. If you personally feel that tattooing is dishonoring your body, then I would certainly say don't do it. But we have to recognize that different people have different, different convictions. Whether you agree or disagree with tattooing and piercing, as a Christian your personal feelings are not a green light for prejudice, discrimination, or unacceptance. If there is clear instruction in the Bible on how to deal with this topic, it's directly from the mouth of Jesus in which he states, Love your brother as yourself, bless those that curse you, and love your enemy. If we read in Matthew 12, 44, it says, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those that persecute you. Now these are your enemies. Um, people with tattoos and piercings and other things that you don't necessarily like in their appearance are not your enemy. Matthew 22, 39 says to love your neighbor as yourself. Um, it's just, it's, it's terribly important that we put things in proper perspective, guys. Whether we like or dislike tattoos and piercings is really irrelevant um, because ultimately we have to love. And when we discriminate against those who have these things or when we condemn those that have these things, we're ultimately, um, we're ultimately responding with a lack of love. So, is tattooing or piercing ever wrong? Yes, I believe that it is. If you consider the heart and reasoning behind the person that's doing it, uh, God always looks upon the heart of a person. There are those who intentionally mutilate their flesh as a form of worship to other gods, as we talked about early in Egyptian culture. Um, there are people who do these things for ungodly intentions. And I believe that there's also many who God just places a personal mandate or conviction upon that they are not to do it. But I believe that these are often the exception and not necessarily the rule when it comes to this subject. I don't believe that tattooing and piercing is innately a sinful practice in and of itself. I think ultimately it's important to, to look at the totality of the circumstances and to take the context with which things are written into serious consideration when we make our judgments about this topic. Ultimately, guys, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're to love each other. These superficial things are just that superficial. Guys, I love you. As always, I'm looking forward to hearing great things. And if you can dig it, say a word. We gotta go.